Uh, so it's great. Robert Sturmer even did a hands-on Kubernetes workshop in our last meetup of, of 2016 uh, that we hosted over at HP, um, which was really, really awesome. So we'll keep bringing you awesome container content. We'll keep bringing you awesome OpenStack content. Um, and you, it's your community, so you tell me what you want to hear and if you want to present, which is exactly what Rupert and the awesome team from, Cloud, from Platform 9 did, and that's why we have this meetup here tonight. Uh, so, but quick announcements, first of all. Today, release day, Okada. We have to give a big shout out to the release management team and to the awesome OpenStack team and all of the, the, I don't want to call us volunteers, I mean we're all volunteer for OpenStack, but the community that worked so hard to get this release out. As, as you know, this was the short cycle, right? This is where we've, we've removed the, the release from the design summit. Uh, we're sorry, we removed the design summit from, from the OpenStack summit. So at some point, it had, someone had to get a short cycle and it was Okada. So the, so the team only had three months to get this out. They, they pushed it out. It went out this morning. Not without glitches, because that's how it works. But, um, but I'm so proud of the team. And I gave them a lot of love on Twitter. You can retweet them. Um, and they're getting a lot of love now uh, in, in the media as well. But it was a big push. They, they deserve your applause. Um, and Okada is now released. So, yay! Release 15. Um, so, on to the next one. Uh, so that, that's exciting. Um, tomorrow night, we have another meetup. I don't usually like to do this to you guys, two in a week, but it's just the way it happened, it just happened. So, um, it's up at Mesosphere in San Francisco on Mesa, well, DCOS, Kubernetes, and OpenStack. Um, you guys all know Liz, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Joseph. She's done book signings here. She's written two books on OpenStack, well, a book on Ubuntu, a book on OpenStack. She's going to be leading the panel tomorrow night at Mesosphere in San Francisco. So for those of you that are in San Francisco or near San Francisco, Mesos is a really fun environment, really fun company. I've been up there a couple of times. They have dogs running around. It's a total startup environment, and it's a really fun place to go have a meetup. Um, so that team's going to be there, and it'll be a great chance to meet them. Uh, so if you can make it up, hopefully it won't be raining and traffic won't be too bad, um, or you won't be stuck at Container World, which I probably will be, uh, and you can go up there and, uh, and and meet with the team up there. So that should be a really good meetup as well. We still want to, uh, we have a couple of meetups in March that we're still scheduling. We hope to be back at VMware. VMware has recently brought the Plum Grid team, you may know. And, um, and some of our favorites from the Plum Grid team are now on the sort of cloud native group and um, looking at, at fun things to do. Partially, maybe containers play a, a part of that. Um, and so we want to hear what they're doing and, and some of the things, the new things that are happening at VMware. So I'm hoping to get that on the calendar. And I'm hoping to get um, Juniper with Open Contrail. And they're doing some partnership stuff with um, Kubernetes and with, with Mirantis. So uh, we want to get that meetup rolling in, in March as well. So lots of good things coming down the pipe. Um, and if you have a good idea for a meetup, you know where to reach me, right? Do you guys all know where to reach me? You're all on my newsletter. You're all part of the user group, right? I'm not seeing a lot of nods. OK. If you're not, go to meetup.com and make sure that you clicked the option to receive <coughs> correspondence from me. Um, because I don't spam you. It's all goodness. I gave people discounts to the Container World Thing today, and many people took advantage of that, and they're having a good time at that conference today. It'll all be upside for you, um, and of course, all, all announcements about, about these meetups. So that's what's going on in the OpenStack community. I want to thank Bill again and Dave Hare for hosting. I want to thank Rupert Pack and the and the clap. I'm going to call you clap mine. <laughs> that's been on my tongue all day. I'm sorry, I've been at a conference all day. I have conference brain. Um, Platform Nine and the awesome team, and they're at Container World too. So uh, I've been having fun with them all day too over at Container World, and as he said, Raspberry Pi, wow, that's not too shabby, that's pretty awesome, so fill out your raffle tickets and make sure you get in that drawing, and stick around to the end, because if you've never seen Kelsey Hightower present, you've never seen Kelsey Hightower present, he's really good, and I saw his presentation this morning, um, he did a live demo, it didn't crash, it was wonderful, he, um, he had some fun with it, he, he, he used Tetris as a way to teach us about containers, and it was a great analogy, um, and a lot of fun, so... Probably, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw all that happen. Uh, so stick around to the end, and, and you'll you'll get a lightning talk from, from Kelsey Hightower. So thanks, everyone. Again, I'm Lisa. <coughs> thanks, Bill. Thank and, you. Um, thank you.
So I think uh, less uh, Battlestar Galactica and more Harry Potter with uh, Platform 9 versus Cloud 9, if anybody gets the esoteric sci-fi reference. So uh, for the main event tonight, we have uh, several folks from Platform 9. Uh, if you don't know about Platform 9 and you're on an open stack journey, I highly recommend you check out what they're doing. Um, they're trying to take all of the really hairy, ugly parts of, of OpenStack and hide it from you. So all you have to do is just make it work and use it. So uh, it's a pretty impressive technology. Uh, our speakers tonight are uh, OpenStack developers. They're shepherding a couple par uh, projects into the Big Tent initiative, uh, part of the VMHA, which we'll learn about, as well as the uh, lease management with more. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll introduce uh, Rupak, who's one of the CTOs and co-founders of uh, Platform 9. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Bill, for having us. And thanks, OpenStack Meetup, uh, for having us. So before we go on to talk about the subject, let me quickly introduce what Platform 9 does. Uh, just a couple of slides, I promise. So Platform 9 was founded in 2013, a uh, bunch of ex-VMware folks. The picture here, the map here, shows all the users that we have. This is a little bit dated, but you can see we are all over the world. Most of our customers are in US, but we have multiple regions around the world. That's why you see all the dots over the map. And we had, we won uh, last year's Gartner Tool Vendor Award. So really proud of that. Platform 9, <clears throat> what we do is we help our customers with the cloud infrastructure journey. Well, physical was always there, virtualization thanks to VMware. DevOps, uh, IS with AWS, CloudStack, OpenStack, this is where Platform 9 works. Microservices with containers with Kubernetes, uh, this is where Platform 9 provides services. And then Platform as a Service or Serverless, we have a new product called Asfission, uh, where Platform 9 uh, is open sourced it uh, fairly recently. So these are the three areas where Platform 9 provides its product as well as services. Do check us out. And if you have any questions, I would be available uh, here after the talk. So, over to Pushkar now for more. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Pushkar Acharya. Uh, I've been an engineer with Platform 9 for about two years now. Uh, I have worked primarily on the vSphere integration with Platform 9 and recently worked on VMHA and the OpenStack Omni project, which is uh, we are open sourcing the AWS drivers so that we, you can use AWS Cloud as a part of OpenStack. So before we begin, um, a show of hands, how many of you actually use uh, OpenStack internally for dev test environments or sales or demo labs kind of thing? Okay, that's fairly lot, which is expected. So we also internally have an in, uh, OpenStack deployment uh, and which is used fairly regularly by our dev test as well as sales teams for creating labs and demoing stuff. What generally happens is the, everyone creates these resources, but no one takes care of deleting them and the resources just keep on piling up. And once the resource consumption goes to a point where it starts affecting our build and test environments, uh, we generally get an email from our ops team saying, hey, we are going to delete all these thousands of VMs. If you want to save them, e email us right now, or else forget about them. Uh, this is actually uh, something that, ha since we have been doing this for quite a long time, we kind of realized that uh, it amounts to about 60% of our unused resources. Our resource consumption has gone up uh, by 60% just because of the unused resources. So this is something that what we are trying to solve with the Mars project. So uh, with MORS, you get two uh, levels of leases, a tenant level lease, which is set by the admin users, and a, a user level lease, which, which the users can extend based on the policy decided by the admin. For example, let's say the admin decides that uh, the, uh, a user can create a VM and it will be deleted after four days. Then uh, all the users that are part of the tenant, all the VMs that are created by those users will be deleted after four days of, of its creation. Within those four days, if the user needs to save his VM, he can basically extend the lease by four days again, at most four days, actually. This is actually 
basically the high level architecture of MOTS. Uh, MOTS is just a simple Python class based service that integrates with Keystone and Nova API. It uses Keystone middleware for authentication and Nova API for managing VMs. We are still in process of extending MOTS to other projects like Glance, Neutron, and Sender. We are also working on getting a Horizon plugin uh, so that we can have MOTS as part of Horizon as well. Um, so let's actually get into a demo. Does it show properly? Okay, since, like I said, we don't have a Horizon plugin yet, uh, so that's why I'll have to use our platform nine UI for um, showing the Mars project. But this is just a different UI using the same Nova API and same. Uh, Keystone APIs that a default open stack uh, provides. So this is one of the VMs that I had created yesterday and the default tenant level leases or currently I had set it to one day. So it's supposed to be deleted in one hour, uh, in two hours. Now I'm not going to wait here for two more hours to see the VM deletion in progress. So let's go ahead and create another VM and let's set it to be deleted in next couple of minutes. <coughs> so I'm going to set a custom lease. And I'm going to set it to be maybe a couple of minutes after the game creation. You'll have to bear with me since this is a nested virtualization environment. It can take some time for the VM to actually spin up. Uh, but till then, we can uh, go ahead and look at how we can extend the list. So let's say I want to save this VM. As you can see, it's supposed to be deleted in 43 minutes. I can save it. Save. Yes. The demo guys are not, not happy with me today. <laughs> I can extend the lease since, like I said, the tenant has, admin has given me set their policy as one day. So after one day of after creation of the VM, it will get deleted. So I can extend the lease again by one day only. So since user has to keep doing this proactively, there is the resources will be cleaned up automatically once the lease ends. Some of the advantages of the of using a default OpenStack deployment are like so. Like I said at the beginning of this uh, presentation, we have contributed OpenStack Omni, which is basically bringing AWS as a cloud under OpenStack. So basically, using MOS, you can control your AWS consumption as well. And OpenStack Omni can be extended to any other cloud, be GCE or Azure. As it, I mean, it's again in development. I guess we still have to wait for a minute or so before the deletion actually takes place. Another uh, advantage that I saw uh, uh, that is there with Mars is that we use very minimal number of Nova APIs like list and delete. So it practically works with almost any version of Nova API out there. If you don't really need the latest Nova API, even the previous ones will work. It 
this was a few seconds ago. So I guess uh, since since there is just a periodic task that runs within the mod service, which checks that whether the lease of a VM has expired or not every couple of minutes. So we'll have to give it a few more seconds before it actually goes and deletes the VM in the background. Okay. It's actually deleting now. And once it deletes, yeah, it's been deleted. <laughs> Back to... So mods, although, although you can see that it works, but it's far from complete. There's a lot of work that still needs to go into mods. Some of the basic things, like we are missing a Horizon plugin and an OpenStack client plugin, which will enable anyone else to use it fairly easily. Also, we need to extend mods to images and volumes and networks in future as well. And like you saw right now, it didn't give me any notification. It just went ahead and deleted the VM. Uh, we need to extend it so that it sends out maybe an email or some visual notification saying that, hey, your VM is going to be deleted. Or maybe shut down the VM and then delete it after a couple of hours. So these are all the things that we need, we are still working on. Uh, if anyone wants to deploy mods in their own um, environment, you can basically go to this GitHub URL and download it from there. All the instructions for deploying the mods are present there. Feel free to contribute as well. We are always welcoming developers to uh, help us get mods up and running. Thank you. Thanks, Pushkar. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sachin. I'm a software engineer at Platform 9. And uh, I'll be talking to you today about uh, a recent feature we added, uh, which uh, provides high availability and open stack in one. So um, uh, we are mainly focused on the virtual machine high availability. In the OpenStack community, if you search for high availability and these kind of concepts, people usually talk about how to make OpenStack highly available. But for for purpose of this talk, uh, we'll be focusing on the actual workload high availability, the workloads that are running it within OpenStack. Um, so many people are sort of confused about this because uh, when you think about a cloud and cloud native apps, uh, Virtual machine high availability is sort of a no-brainer. Uh, you can always implement it using a cloud-native app. You can provide that intelligence in a application level. And even if any kind of disaster go happens, uh, your applications are safe, right? And that's the Amazon philosophy. They don't they don't do any kind of engine for your applications, and they can shut off their hosts anytime they like. Um, but for our customers and even for us. Uh, we felt that we are on a cloud journey. We are not there yet. We are not Netflix. We are not Google to run all our applications in a cloud native way. We still have applications which are pretty old, and uh, they they are based on that old model of having a physical server running 24/7, 365 days of a uh, year, uh, and it can't take any kind of faults. Uh, and that's why we. Uh, we started on about thinking about this feature, and many of our customers, surprisingly, also wanted this feature. Um, and this is a mindset that uh, comes from VMware side of things. So many people who are migrating from VMware to OpenStack, they want to change their hypervisor to KVM. Uh, one of the first questions they ask us is, how do I keep my database servers and DNS servers highly available? How do I protect them against faults? So um, uh, that's why we thought it would be a right thing to do to implement this feature uh, in OpenStack. And while we were researching that, we found out that um, one of the companies had already uh, done this before us. So they had some sort of uh, project in place which provides virtual machine HA. So um, it was uh, a project called Masakari. Uh, it's a big time project in OpenStack. It's uh, developed by NTD Data. And uh, what it provides is it provides a protection against uh, virtual machine crashes. So if a virtual machine crashes, it can restart the virtual machine somewhere else or uh, on the same hypervisor. 
Uh, it can protect you against node crashes. It can protect you against uh, network partitions. Uh, it can protect you against uh, disasters like an entire availability zone going down. And uh, it's quite extensive and flexible. So you get to choose what is your, the, the fault boundary that you're comfortable with and how do you want to configure. So uh, that's great, right? It, it, it can, uh, so given you have shared storage or some sort of uh, evacuation uh, vMotion setup, it can actually recover your VMs on a, on a healthy hypervisor and they keep running. So uh, what is that weighted uh, differently? So uh, this is how Masakane looks. Uh, so it's a very simple uh, OpenStack uh, project. So uh, there is a single service called the API service. And you tell the service that something has gone wrong, so you would like to evacuate VMs. And then it will go ahead and evacuate VMs to a healthy hypervisor or a healthy node. Uh, you can set policies like you can say, I don't want to evacuate all my VMs. This is a database VM that I always want to protect. So only evacuate that VM and everything else doesn't matter. Uh, you, can spare, uh, you can set certain spare capacity in the cluster so that you can say there are few hosts which are always standby hosts. No workloads run on them. Uh, and they get only get used in case of a disaster. So that way it is, uh, it is pretty expensive, expressive. And um, in terms of architecture, it is divided into two parts. So there is the API component, which is the controller side component. And that API component is pluggable. So I was talking about earlier where uh, the model basically says you have to tell it that some disaster has happened, so evacuate VMs. And the mechanism which does that, if you look at uh, OpenStack uh, documentation, people will basically describe uh, recipes about setting up Pacemaker and Corosan. So Pacemaker is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a project by Red Hat. And it is essentially a distributed um, uh, consensus uh, product where if any nodes in your infrastructure which, has impl which implement that service, uh, if any one of them go down, then using distributed consensus, it can uh, basically figure out and tell you that something has gone wrong. On top of that, it also provides certain other things like uh, elastic IPs, for example. Um, so uh, great, right? So we, we have Masakari and we have Pacemaker. So what are we talking about here? So if you, if you think about it, if you implement such a solution in a production environment and something goes wrong and your VMs evacuate, that's all great. But it's a, because it's a distributed consensus uh, protocol, once a single load in that cluster goes down, your cluster membership is likely lost. Or the cluster is in a degraded state. So instead of having uh, a consensus, it just has two nodes which, can, which are right now deciding uh, what, to, what to report. So as an admin, if a disaster happens, uh, I don't want to be responsible for it. So I get paged anyway because my cluster has degraded. So if another thing goes down as a result of that, then the workloads on that node won't be able to recover. And that's the problem that uh, these kind of deployments typically face because there is no mechanism to automatically uh, re-elect a leader or establish the distributed consensus. And that's what we uh, did at Platform Map. So what we essentially did was we implemented something else here, which talks to Masakari. And uh, it has the ability to automatically reconfigure itself if something goes wrong in the environment. So let me talk about what we did. Question? Yeah. Um, is there any way we can prevent, say, a node or um, a virtual machine goes down? It's in the... Um, uh, working on uh, doing some computation. Um, is that computation ever saved or can be repeated? Um, or is it just lost and, and the user has to go out and try it again after he founds out that it, it's not working? Yeah, so the, the high availability solutions typically don't guarantee that. So to guarantee that you need something 
else, which is the, the fault tolerance. So VMware has a product which where they can do two VMs which synchronize operations between them. And they're always in sync. So if one of them goes down, the other one has the exact uh, working set that to work. So does Mascadero work with that? Uh, no. There is no, no such thing today not on the open stack set. So uh, high availability does mean that your workload is not available for around three to five minutes until it can recover again on a different host. So it's not uh, it's not always on kind of solution. And it informs somebody that uh, um, something there was a default uh, failure or fault. Yeah, so uh, you can set up uh, cylinder based notifications that a node has gone down and uh, okay. admins can get email. Yeah. So uh, we 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 chose this tool called console. Uh, how many of you are familiar with, have you heard of console by HashiCorp? Uh, cool. So the thing we like about liked about console is that it's super simple to set up. There's just a single binary which you start and you tell it uh, how do you want to run? And uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, the console uh, application has basically two modes in which it runs. So there is a server mode and there is a client mode. And uh, for a highly available cluster, you need at least three servers because that's typically the distributed uh, consensus protocol requirement. So once you have three servers, they can elect one of them as the leader, which is shown here by the star. And uh, the rest basically uh, forward the request uh, of writing to the cluster to this uh, particular leader. And everybody else is a client, which essentially just follows the leaders. And uh, console can be configured to have uh, three, five, seven, as many servers as you like. Uh, only thing is that the more servers you have, the more gossipy it becomes, so it sort of affects your scalability. Um, and uh, another nice thing about console is that it is uh, sort of agnostic to the network, so you can set it up across the internet uh, between two data centers and sort of have a highly available uh, cluster. So uh, at Platform 9, we use console as our mechanism to detect any kind of host failures. So um, uh, this is what I was talking about. Um, so what we do on, uh, on our part is we set up a console cluster and uh, we monitor the cluster health state. If a node goes down, we invoke Masakari to evacuate VMs. And once the evacuation is done and everything is fine, we uh, reestablish the cluster membership. So let's say a server node went down and because of which the, the cluster is no longer in a good state, we'll uh, reconfigure it again so that uh, there are always at least three server nodes in that cluster. So that next time if the failure happens, we are able to recover from it again. Um, so uh, this is the architecture with Platform 9. So um, the master.